Greetings and shalom. This is Adrian Scott, and you're on Truth and Testimony, the broadcast. Time for some more shekels for your thoughts. Um, this is another interesting one that's just kind of near and dear to me. It, it ties into something that I once heard a speaker say, and it is the state of the world today. And I don't think there's a better way to phrase that. I don't have a fancy title for this or anything. So I'm just going to get into it and talk about it. Um, the example that I'll kind of lay out is this idea of, and, and it is true, you know, you can look around and you see all these mountains and forests and rivers and even deserts and snow-capped hilltops and whatever, you know, these rolling fields and this and that and everything else. And we said, isn't that so beautiful? Look at God's creation. And I absolutely do agree with that. However, I have to make an observation. As I heard somebody once say, he said, what we're looking at today is a junkyard compared to what was before. This is the ruined remains of almost, as it were, of the effects of the global flood, this destruction that reigned upon the planet um, to, to wipe out life, right? Because we get the sense in Scripture that prior to the flood, there weren't necessarily mountains. There might have been some hills. There weren't oceans. It was mostly dry land that the oceans really are kind of the remains of the flood waters themselves. So when you're sailing across the Pacific or the Atlantic, you're sailing across the remains of the global flood that wiped out just about everything other than Noah and his family and whatever animals were on the ark, you know. When you see those mountains, that's the devastation of the tectonic plates getting, getting shifted around as the fountains of the deep burst forth. Right, And it pushed the land up and it created those mountain ranges. I always found it kind of fascinating. You can see a loose parallel between the major fault line, one of the major fault lines anyways, and the major mountain ridge of like the, for North America, the Rocky Mountains, that this fault line and this mountain line kind of run parallel. And I always found that so intriguing. I mean, it's not a precise, but is that could it be that where that land split and the fountains were bursting forth and it pushed the land out to the side that eventually that's going to stop somewhere and it's going to start pile, piling up. <clears throat> if you go into a playground or something and you push dirt out or onto a beach, you push it out, it's going to start piling up. And that formed the mountain ranges. So, you know, what we see today is a scrapyard or a junkyard of what was. And if we see it today and it's still quite beautiful, try to imagine how amazing it was before the flood. And we know that it's going to be returned to that at some point. And I'll tell you, being someone, I'm not a big, you know, embrace the green movement and tree hugger and this and that. I do absolutely believe we should be good stewards of God's creation. Absolutely 100%. You know, but are trees more important than man? No. You know, are bears more important than humans? No, not in my reckoning. But they are important. And we're supposed to be good stewards over all of that. So don't try to put words in my mouth because I know there's some people, they really get their feathers ruffled when you start stepping on toes like that. Um, I think in some cases, the priorities are a bit in the wrong place. The heart's good, but the priorities are a little askew. Anyways, having that's my tangent for this video. But uh, I, I can still look out and appreciate the beauty of this stuff. Absolutely. Here I am wanting to get this big fancy smancy drone so that I can go take footage of this stuff because I think it's lovely enough to do that and use it as a backdrop in a video or for a scriptural passage or something, right? So not to take anything away of my appreciation of the natural beauty that we do have and we need to protect. We need to be good stewards of. But it is not anything near as beautiful as what it was before the global flood. And that's just something interesting. Another observation that the same person made was, you know, every time you stop at a gas pump and your, your 
fueling up your vehicle. You're fueling that vehicle up with the judgment of God. Because where does that gasoline come from? It comes from oil. What is oil? Oil is the remains of dead animals that were killed in the flood and buried. And they find these sediments where it's turned into this material and they refine it and process it and becomes gasoline. So you're, you're fueling your vehicle up with the judgment of God. And you're sailing across the remains of the global flood. I mean, it's it just changed my perspective a little bit. And uh, like I said, I really do appreciate how it is going to go back to what it was before. In fact, for all I understand about Scripture, when heaven and earth are remade and everything, which is going to happen at some point, that it may even be better. And uh, yay for that, you know. So I, I don't want to drag out this one too terribly long, so I'll kind of wrap it up on that point. But just an observation, every time you're looking out and you're seeing those things, you know, try to remember that a lot of that is the way it is now because of the judgment of God and the global flood. So short, short but sweet, I'm going to wrap it up there. And I will ask you if you did enjoy the video. Please give it a thumbs up. Share it with others. We're always, that's the whole point of what Ray and I are trying to do with this is get this information. And I'm not trying to even teach anyone. I'm just, my goal is to try to provoke people to think. Just stop and think about it. Get into the word for yourself. Develop your own relationship with the Father. You know, I, um, I've often told even my family, I said, you know, when, when there's going to be a come, there's going to come a day when you're going to have to stand before the throne and give an account for everything you've done in your life. This, I don't think is a moment where you're getting your salvation or not. This is a question of crowns. There's crowns handed out for these different things. What are your rewards? Because your rewards are based on a lot of those things. What kind of... I don't know what it's going to be like in heaven, but what kind of position or where are you going to be, right? I mean, there's different degrees. I think that like the apostles, for example, are, are at a higher standing, you know, in the kingdom than I will probably be. Um, and I'm okay with that because look at what they endured, right? They, oh, the suffering that they went through. Wow. I, I can't make any comparison. So they deserve whatever honor and position that they get, however that works out. But um, I'm just trying to encourage people to think, stop and ponder about it. Take a moment in the day and smell the flowers and think about the father, you know, and get into that word. Read it. But anyways, another rabbit hole. <laughs> Like the video, share, because we want the information to get out. And if you have not subscribed, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you get notified every time we do release a video. And I will conclude there and just say blessings to every one of you in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus our Savior. And I do say shalom and bye for now. been watching Truth and Testimony, the broadcast. If you have a comment, please leave it on the bottom of this video or email us at truthandtestimonyemail at gmail.com. Again, thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time. Truth and Testimony, the broadcast is not affiliated with Truth and Testimony magazine.